What's up, everybody? Welcome to the panel. Of course, we are here joined by the voice of Black Panther, James Mathis III. Give him a round of applause, you guys. Do we need these at this point? Hey, guys. Right? It's just right? us. It's just so cool. Unless it's for the record. It's super chill. Oh, it might be. It might be recording an audio. Uh, welcome to Raleigh. Thanks for having me. It's is this time. your first time? It is indeed. It is. I, um, I've only been to North Carolina one other time. My sister graduated from uh, Salem College. But it's nice. I'm yeah, here. it is cool. It's cool. Are you here all weekend? I am, yeah. You got, definitely got to check out the nightlife out here in Raleigh. I've heard good things about the food as well. The food is awesome. There's uh, and and the, but the nightlife is great. The the bars are amazing. Um, it's a really fun fun city. I mean, we were here last year for Raleigh Supercon. This is our second time being back, nice. and it's beautiful. Nice. It really is. I agree. But um, too. absolutely, great great, great people. Um, but you're from. Oh, we were just talking just a moment ago. But you're from Brooklyn. I am. You still live in Brooklyn? No, I don't. I live in uh, Los Angeles now. Okay. I um, after high school, uh, I went to college. And, uh, LA. I went to USC. Okay. USC Film School, to be specific. And, uh, and I like it. The weather's, the weather's nice. You know, I have a November birthday, and it's usually 70 degrees around my birthday. Can't beat that. It's just kind of hard. New York was always pretty much bitter cold. Um, so I appreciate the weather. It makes, it makes the rest of life a little bit easier. Yeah. You know? November birthday. Sagittarius? Yes, indeed. What's uh, November? 28th. Oh, that's the day after my wife's birthday. I'm a Thanksgiving baby. Ah, yeah. all right. My grandmother said the turkey never got done that day. Because <laughs> it was John one, you know, being born. So, yeah, you know, the, you know, the, so how long have you been out in L.A.? Uh, uh, 25 years. Wow. Yeah, 25 years. Long, longer than I lived in, in New York, actually. So at this point, I, I struggle with, with calling L.A. home in, yeah. in that rooted sense. But uh, in truth, it, it probably is more home than, than Brooklyn was. But Brooklyn will always be home. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been living in Florida now longer than I lived in, in New York also. So it's like, same yeah. thing. It's, yeah. I'm home now. So We grow up, we, we, we plant a flag somewhere, and, and then hope to, to, to populate that area. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you get um, started in acting? Did you start in high school, or what, what, what brought you to it? Yeah, I started in, uh, in, in high school, junior high school, of okay. course, and then in high school. Uh, when I first got to high school, I was, I was a little nervous about uh, signing up for the play. Mm. I walked in to a, a dress rehearsal, and there were all these upperclassmen, and they were doing hair. Okay, yeah. Not, not actually doing right, hair. Right, the show, hair. The show yeah. hair. And, uh, and it was just overwhelming. The, the scale of it, uh, Brooklyn Tech is the high school I went to, and it has one of the larger, well, one of the larger auditoriums in New York City. And so just the, the grand scale of what a show was to be in high school for me was, was overwhelming. And so I, I chose not to uh, engage in the play, and instead I ran track. Okay. Uh, that was another something I wanted to do. Um, what was your favorite uh, event in track? Mm -hmm. Probably the 400 hurdles. Okay. Yeah, I ran a lot of half miles in, wow. uh, in high school. We had, you know, four by eights. And, and I did everything. I was, I was in the pentathlon. I was oh, in the cool. city. And, um, but it was fun. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was a fun time. And, and then uh, I guess my sophomore year in high school, uh, I, I was put in drama class. Okay. And one of my close friends, was in the school production at the time. And that just kind of made it more real for me. Right. You know, I was like, oh, well, if someone I know is doing it, maybe I can too. And it stripped away the, the apprehension and the fear. And, uh, and the following year, I tried out and, and got the lead. And, and that's pretty much when the club when really did. What was the show that they were doing that year? The first one we did was Oliver. Okay. And I was cast as Fagin. Oh, cool. Which was which was kind of cool. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't want to sing on stage either. And I had these songs. It was just it was. I had to overcome a lot. Yeah. To be able to do that, and it, it really tested how much I wanted it. Right. You know, and I, and I realized that I did. I lost my dad that year, mm -hmm. um, and so I was I was really just looking for something to hold on to. Right. And and acting became that thing for me. That's so great. It was yeah. a great outlet. And, and I was able to dump my all into it. And then the following year, we did Fiddler on the Roof. Okay. Uh, and I was Tevian as well. Uh, colorblind casting, you gotta love it. That's <laughs> the great thing about, uh, about prep school. Um, and yeah, that, that's where it started in, in high school. That's great. And did, uh, after high school and, you know, high school production stuff, did you go to acting school or anything like that? Did you take any classes? I did not. I did not. I was, uh, I was an extra in a movie when I was in uh, junior high school. That was my first taste of, of the, the movie making experience. Uh, it was a movie starring Sandra Bullock. She was the first celebrity I'd ever seen. Really? Uh, very, very, very young. It's on the book. Um, 
but I still didn't want to want to commit to it. Prior to high school, I wanted to go to the high school for music and art, the Fame School, but my mom did not want me to go there. Mm -hmm. She instead wanted me to have a, a firm educational foundation. Right. So I ended up going to a technical high school, majoring in computer science. Wow. I was a bit of a nerd, you know. Um, and so similarly, when it came to choosing college, I didn't want to be a theater major. I wanted to have something that, something more practical that yeah. I felt like I could do with my life. And I, I went for business school. It's like, this is, this is what I can do. I'll, I'll be able to make some money. You know, my, my girlfriend in high school was, was pre-med. So I was thinking, we were going to do this. Like yeah, Cosby's, yeah. you know. <laughs> was, was totally Cosby's. I was really looking forward to that. I thought about being a lawyer myself, you know, just. That sounded like the Huxtables, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what we were looking for. And, and it, it didn't work. I didn't like business enough. It was just, it wasn't creative enough. And, and I bounced around trying to find something still practical. Yeah. Um, but in the end, I couldn't really deny my creative self. And I wound up going to Korea for three weeks as part of a program where the Korean government invited 50 African-American students in the wake of the LA riots. Oh, wow. Just to learn about Korean culture. Wow. I thought, well, this is a great experience. Yeah, it's you know? cool. And then I applied and was accepted. And it asked what my major was in school. And I bounced around from business to psychology to occupational therapy. I didn't really have one. But I knew that every summer, I would get the video camera out and film my friends and make them do all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, I'm a filmmaker. That's what I am. And I put that on my application, lied a little bit. And they said, great, <laughs> we want you to shoot a documentary for us. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, talk about calling me up. <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can do We're going to test you up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I believed in myself, though. I, I believed in my, in my creative vision. And a couple days later, they called to let me know that Fox was going to be donating uh, equipment for us to use. Wow. And so I documented our trip, 24 days. We did everything from, you know, going to the Korean version of the White House. It's called the Blue House, to... Uh, we were ambassadors, you know, we were, we were ambassadors, and it was great, it was very, very empowering, mm -hmm. you know, in that sense, because we were representing not only ourselves, but our, our country. Yes. You know, our, our country, our people. Right. You know, um, it was an opportunity to, to dispel a lot of the myths about blacks, you know, and, um, and it was a great experience. We got back, and, and Fox cut it up, and it aired a couple mornings on uh, the, morning, the morning show there. Good That's day, awesome. Like, yeah, no, it was no, also no. a great opportunity for you to, to prove it to yourself that it was, this is, I can do this. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great to see, you know, in the end, the, the things that I shot, the things that I filmed, right. make it on TV. That's amazing. You know, and, and it's, it's all because of a little lie. Yeah. You know, was, I, I'd like to think that I was leading with, with, with my belief in myself, with my, you know, my intentions in that way. Um, but that kind of made me go, all right, maybe I'll apply to film school for real. And, uh, and I didn't. But I did see a... <laughs> I was in the film school building hanging out, and I saw a sign that was looking for um, for interns at uh, at Disney, mm. at Walt Disney's uh, Hollywood Pictures. But I thought I'm going to apply. Why not? And I had a great interview. I had two resumes at the time. I had my acting resume, and then I had my production and professional resume. And unfortunately, I forgot to remove that I had performed in drag <laughs> as RuPaul. Wow. From my professional resume. So when I got to the interview at Disney, I can see it though. That's all they yeah, want to talk about. That's funny. That's all she wanted to talk about. She says, Yeah, yeah, nice guy. So what about this drag thing? <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I didn't realize that was on. I've also done that. But it completely tell you? Yeah? Yes, I performed the stand up comedy in okay. drag. You have to. It's funny. Have it's to. fun and it's a great time. It's, it's like an out of body experience. You yeah. You get to see yourself. And you get to be someone else and exactly. it brings out a different character. Yeah. yeah. And know? I was in the business of, of, of creating character. Yeah. You know, as an actor. So if I could convince you that this is what I had going on, then I've done my job. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, I was I was selected mm -hmm. as one of two interns uh, to awesome. to work there at uh, at Disney on the Disney line. So I got to learn a lot about film production. Uh, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to apply to film school for real this yeah. time. And I got great letters of recommendation from the Korean consulate as well as from Disney. And I was accepted in the, in the film school program. That's awesome. In the production program, which is the most challenging program at the school to, uh, to get into. Wow. And, and I'd like to think that uh, I used a lot of my pain. You know, I was still just a couple of years removed from uh, the death of my father. And, and I had that experience in, in Korea. 
And I just try to find a way to, to, to pull it all together and, and find a narrative that would be, uh, that would be engaging and also uh, would reveal the type of person that I was. Right. And it worked out, and it worked out. I was accepted into that program. I had uh, two great years in the USC Film School. And um, yeah. yeah. And how did all that lead to, I mean, obviously you're, you're, you're the voice of Black Panther, which is what you're doing now, but you've also done many video games over the yes. years, uh, yes. Metal Gear. Yeah. Um, how, did you, how did you transition from, from being an on-screen actor and then also uh, behind the scenes yeah. filming to then uh, becoming a voice actor? Uh, let's see, wow. Uh, so out of, out of college, I worked with uh, an actress by the name of Kim Coles. Oh, yeah. an actress. She was on a, a show called Living Have Single at the time. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I saw another flyer one day. I saw a flyer looking for, uh, for volunteers to work backstage on her one woman show, which actually featured four guys. It was a one woman <laughs> show with four guys. Um, and it asked me what my, what, you know, what my specialty was. And I didn't have one. But I, another little, another little line. I told her, another little line. I said, I was a stage, I was a stage manager. That, that, that's what I have. And so they're like, great. We need to be our stage manager. And it was, it was a wonderful experience uh, with Kim working on a play that we did in L.A. And it ultimately took us to New York. We performed the show off Broadway. Now I, I was in the uh, I was in the wings, so I wasn't I wasn't uh, a creative part of the show, but I just kind of helped tie it all together. I did serve as the understudy. Oh wow! Uh, for all four guys, and and by the end so of you the swing, I, you yeah. had to know everybody's exactly. Part. And and as as dark luck would have it. Uh, one of the actors had a family emergency oh. and needed to leave town, and they asked me to, to step in, you know, and, and it, it was great. It, it reminded me of, of what my real passion was, yeah. you know. I could be good at whatever I was doing, you know. If I'm the guy backstage and I'm handing you your things as you're, as you're coming off, I'm going to be the best at that. And when it came time to show my abilities as an actor, I rose to the occasion, which was great. And so we, we, we took the show to New York. And when we were done, Kim had written a book and was going to be doing a book tour. And her manager asked me to serve in his stead and travel with her. So I got to go to different events with her. And that's where I feel like I really learned how to be a professional. Um, Kim just had a really, really great way with people, with her fans. Uh, she was always very engaging. And, and, and these are things that, that I try to embody as well in my experiences with people. Uh, it's so important. Yeah, I it mean, really she, she made sure that the moment was the moment. And, yes, and it, was, it was a very unique moment with whoever you were meeting. Right. You know, uh, but that lasted just the summer, and then I needed a real job, a, a practical job. So I started working in the promotions department, on-air promotion at FX. You guys oh. know FX? They have Archer. And yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, it was a very young FX at the time. Yes. And that work was only maybe two or three years old. Um, but on-air promotions is the uh, the commercials that we air to promote our shows. I had a very, very menial job, just, you know, logging tapes and, and, and the like. Eventually I started writing promos, but I still continued acting. It, I was auditioning for on-camera uh, roles at the time, because that was what I thought I wanted to do. Right. You know, I didn't really know very much about voiceover, other than I made funny voices at times and, and could do things like that, but I, I didn't find a way to professionalize it or, or monetize it. Um, and then one of my coworkers had a friend who was an agent. And this coworker knew that I was an actor, knew my abilities, had seen me on TV. Thankfully, I had a couple of things that, that made it. You know, right. I did some music videos. I worked with In Vogue. Uh, I was the, the bad guy in, in the video, just the, just the shameful guy <laughs> cheating on one of them. Um, <laughs> and I worked with Tony Braxton as well. I had wow. a Coors Light commercial with Jamie Foxx. Uh, so I had a couple of higher profile things. Yeah. I wore locks. I had long locks for a while. Okay. So anything that was like Jamaican or Rasta or something, I, I, I probably had a, had a shot at it. Um, and then I met the agent, and it was initially a, a meeting for commercial representation. And when that was done, they asked me to, to step over to the voiceover department and read a couple things for them. Two weeks later, I booked my first job, and that, I was pretty booked. I was hooked up. Yeah, it's I was been pretty much rolling ever since. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Thankfully. Um, and then uh, McDonald's had the I'm Loving It campaign for yep. a while. And I was really able to, to cut my teeth on that campaign. Wait, you're the bada ba 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 guy? I, I was a regional bada ba 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 guy. <laughs> so, you know, in, in, in California and in Oregon and in Washington and, you know, up and down the, the West Coast. 
Yeah, I did lots of raps. I'm loving it. Yeah, I did lots of raps. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it was pretty cool. It yeah. Was, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, and again, that, that got me uh, to be more comfortable at the mic. I still hadn't worked in, in animation yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I started in, in, you know, in commercial right, right, right. and then promo. And then finally, a uh, video game came through. Uh, Shadow of Rome, where I played uh, twin zombies. Mm -hmm. And the casting director and director on that was the casting director on Ben 10, which was my first uh, my first actual animated role. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, a bit circuitous. Yeah. I, I can't necessarily say, hey, someone follow this path. Right. Your, your path is... is Everyone's path different. is different. Yeah. And there's so many different ways, and it's, it's, it's sometimes just a chance meeting Indeed. that can change everything. Indeed. I think uh, one of the most important things is, is to be open yeah. to all of the possibilities, because you don't necessarily know how you're going to get there. I agree. I, I yeah. just had to trust in, in the diversity of my interests and in hopes that it would, it would land me where I wanted to go. You know, but no, absolutely. I, I never presumed that, that I, I knew how to get there. Right. You know, um, and I think that helped. Again, you know, I, I started my voiceover career while working in on air promo, and you know, in, in a not very creative job. Yeah. So, you know, just 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 being open to, to the possibilities. Yeah, and you have to tell yourself, oh, I'll get there. Yeah, exactly. One way or another, I'll get there. And it's a, and it's about goals as well. I think one of the one of the great things I take away from my time running track is setting goals. Mm -hmm. and, and the clock doesn't lie. If you want to run one minute and you run a minute one, you know you didn't run one minute. You know, and so there's there's a there's a, a cold hard truth in that. Yes. That I've that I've always held firmly to, even in the setting of my goals. And most of my goals are tiered. You know, there's the ultimate goal. Uh, I think a year or two ago, my goal was I want to go to a con. I've never been to a con. I want to go to a con. And I set that plan in motion. And here we are. You know, here we are. And we're very happy to have you, absolutely. This is a dream come true for me. You know, it's, it's why I receive everyone so warmly. It's because you might want me here, but I really wanted to be here. You know, I really wanted to be here. And, and you walk through the general population. You didn't absolutely. come to the back. You, like, yeah. you want to experience it. You know, I'm, I'm not that guy. Yeah. You know, I'm not that guy. You, you, you want to, I think about uh, Ali when, when he fought in, in Africa. Right. The main, one of the main differences between him and George Foreman was that Ali was a man of the people. You know, George kind of kept to himself, and and everyone here is what what keeps me going. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's your appreciation of, of what we do that allows us to continue doing. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm always down to, to get in and give a what's up, a, a throw, you know, what kind of forever. I think it's important in all aspects of life is just to stay humble and, of, uh, and always remember where you came from. Yeah. And you have to appreciate everybody who supports you. Absolutely. You know, show appreciation. Uh, yeah. It's very important. I agree. All right, so obviously this is the Black Panther panel. We have a lot of Black Panther fans in here. Nobody cares about me in college. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely want to. I want to see if there's any questions in the crowd that we have uh, about Black Panther or anything at all. So does anyone have any questions? Because it is a Q and A. Don't be shy. Uh, I was Enforcer Alien. That's what that was my character. He just sounded like this. Uh, yeah, he was one of those. Guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of those. It was. Just, it was a similar character sound uh, to what I had done in the video game. And so the, the casting director knew, you know, that I could do that, so she brought me in. She didn't set me up to fail, she, she set me up to win. You know, she brought me in to do something that I, I could do. You know, great. Yeah. It's right in your wheelhouse. It was, yeah, it was. Indeed. Ah, good to see you. Good to see you, uh, <laughs> What did playing Black Panther give to you? Because uh, like you brought a lot to the character. What did the character give back to you after you played for so long? The question is, what did uh, Black Panther uh, give me? In, in some ways, uh, it, it legitimized my journey. Um, it, it validated some core beliefs that I have that I think make up a, a good, well-rounded human being. Um, a lot of the, just the fundamental attributes of, of T'Challa He's, he's noble, he's intelligent, he's compassionate. You know, all of those things are things that I try to embody a, as an individual. And so to, to play a character who embodies those same things, I think 
it, it just it, it just kind of confirmed for me that the choices that I was making were uh, were right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And especially with the, the film being as popular right. as it is, it, it just propelled Black Panther into the stratosphere, and now he's so super popular now. I mean, as he should be. He's an amazing character, and now you get to embody the cartoon. Yes. And that's it's phenomenal. Like that has to have some weight to it. It it, it does. Um, I'm grateful for the choices that I made in in the initial incarnation of the character. Uh, I I began the role in 2010. Right. And so it's it, it's great to feel like I don't have to make major adjustments to to what I've been doing based on what we've all seen on right. screen. You know, uh, I said at a panel recently that. I'm not an actor playing Chadwick playing Panther. Right. You know, it's like we both we're both playing a character. Right. You know, and then he's gonna make his choices and I'm going to make mine. But it's it's still the same character. Right. You know, I'm not trying to be him, he didn't try to be me, you know. Um, but it's it's been a rewarding experience, I must say. It has been. Yeah. I, I often thought of how I wanted my children to play or just how how children play. You know, when, when you're a kid and you're, I'm da -da -da -da, and you're with your friends and you, and I thought, how do I want them to play as Panther? You know, what, what, what is it that I want to be important for them? I want them to be proud. Yeah. You know, I want them to be, to always be aware that this, you're talking about a king here. He's, he's not just the nerd who, who stepped into the phone booth and it became something else. No, it's, it's a, it's a, a real person with these great responsibilities. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and being mindful of having responsibilities, I think, is another thing that resonates uh, with T'Challa. Because we all have things that we do, you know, and, and we prioritize them accordingly. And for, for T'Challa, those things include his duties at home, you know, his duties to his own people, right. as well as saving, saving the world. You know, and, and, there's, and there's a balance in that that I think he struggles with at times. Yeah. But we all do. Absolutely, it's very, it's a very human um, aspect of everyone's life. Mm -hmm. like everyone has struggles, everyone has problems, right. and uh, you humanize them in a way. Like, yes, very well. By the way. Amazing. You. Yes. I appreciate that. Well, that's one of the uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the season we're working on now. Okay. Uh, Avengers: uh, Secret Wars, Avengers Assemble is now being renamed Black Panther's Quest. Yes, it's more. And it's more about you, right? It is more about T'Challa. It is more about his relationship with Shuri. We uh, we get to see that character uh, come to the forefront as mm -hmm. well, and it touches on the other sides of him that we haven't been able to see. All the all the other superheroes have some popular origin story right. that we've seen, but we haven't seen that with T'Challa. And so it's great to to take them back to Wakanda, and we get to understand the context of how he makes his decisions. Mm -hmm. and and it's, it's a really fun ride. That's cool. I look yeah. forward to seeing that. Yeah, it's, it's cool. You get to see the whole family tree. You get to learn all of these different things about them, which has deepened my appreciation uh, of it, you know, for them, because there's a lot of stuff I didn't know. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's going to open it up for everyone to know more about it. Yes. Now, are you still working on that currently, or is that already? Currently, yes. Just this past Wednesday. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're in ADR. Well, I, I call them Wakanda Wednesdays. <laughs> uh, we're, in a, we're in ADR right now. Yes. Uh, so we have about maybe ten episodes done. Okay. Um, and it's it's been great. It's cool. Been, it's been great. Yeah. Definitely look forward to seeing that. It's been great. great. All right, let's look back to the crowd. See if anyone. Oh, we got a question right over here. Hi. Outside of hey again. <laughs> um, outside of T'Challa, who is probably like either live action or animation one character you wish you could voice? Mm. The character I wish I could voice outside of. Wow. I get a Mufasa. I'm sorry. I get like a Mufasa uh, about you, but <laughs> no, I, I respect those characters though. I, I, wow. Yeah, I haven't really thought of uh, any of the characters I like to voice. I would say just without anyone specific, probably one that's not black. I think I'd want to do that to to continue to to enforce the idea that it is colorblind. In, in voiceover, and that's what makes it so appealing. That's what drew me to it as well. Is there's a, a, a wider variety of characters that I can portray when it's just my voice on screen. I'm, I'm limited to is he, is he brown or is he not brown? You know, um, 
And so yeah, non, non specifically, I'd say anyone who's not black, let me let me have a hand at that. Cool. Any other? Right here. So you're someone who's like obviously has like a plethora of different voices you can do. Would you say it's more or less advantageous to be a jack of all trades as far as you know being able to do more, or having a specific voice, or you know something like that, or personality? It's like a company would say, okay. I can go directly to him for that. Or it's like, we need this, call him, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the, the question is about uh, whether or not it's, it's, it's better to be a jack of all trades or to have a signature uh, voice. And I would say it varies. It, it depends on that those voices that you can do. Can you nail them? Can you master them? I'd rather you be great at two than good at five. And that's what they will want from you. So if there is a signature sound that you have, like the gentleman who voices Thanos, and, and, and say, he's gonna he's gonna sound like no, I haven't heard anyone sound like him, you know. But that's his thing. That's his lane. Um, and then there are people who who can you know genuinely do a, a real wide variety. And and it, it's it, you gotta play to your strengths. You know, I think I think producers and directors love working with utility players. Because what happens in the recordings is, you know, we, we might have five five of us, but there might be seven characters. And so someone has to do, there's some overlap in there. And so in those moments, they do appreciate someone who's, who's got his toolbox or her toolbox of, of a variety of voices. You know, but then you think about Bart Simpson, right? You don't know Nancy Cartwright for, for many other things besides that. Right. You know, and so it, it's, it varies, it varies. Yeah, some people do so many voices. That's right. But then there's like a James Earl Jones or someone who has that specific exactly. voice. Exactly. And I could you can't see him doing anything else but that voice. Yeah. But then there's like a let's say, I don't know, like Jay Farrow could do like a million different impersonations yeah. of people. And those people have a lot of value for business. You know, they have a lot of value because directors know that any 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 secondary role that's needed in an episode, they can count on that person. You know? yeah. Good question. Uh, any other questions out there in the crowd? Because I could talk to them all day. <laughs> Me too. Right back here. Hi. Uh, Disney bought Fox, so I didn't know if there was any characters you might have thought of that you want the Black Panther to maybe team up or go against from that universe. Yeah. Um, talking about Disney's acquisition of, of Fox and, and the characters available. I think Storm is a character that uh, a lot of people would like to see in Black Panther's world. Of course. And, uh, and I'd have to echo that. I think we all need love. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, FSCW Wrestling, it's, uh, it's a cosplay wrestling. They perform here at the con. Yeah. And um, Black Panther won the title last night. Oh. And our, our women's champ is Storm. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're the champs now. It's pretty cool. That. It just makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It just, it just makes sense. Yeah. So I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. Let's see some black love on screen. <laughs> we had a hand back here. I stress is to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Uh, practice all the time, uh, and then try to try to try to give yourself a vision board of sorts. Be clear with yourself and what you want. You know, what is your ultimate goal? Is it to win an Oscar? Is it to win an Emmy? Is it to be a working actor? Uh, and then start taking steps to align yourself with that goal. Um, workshops are always great. Acting classes are great. Um, and, and, and just, it sounds silly, but we're in the business of, of creating and being people. So furthering your understanding of, of just people and the human experience, I think is something that's very valuable in the creation of, of, of characters, both on screen and off. That's where I start. That's where I would start. Um, but you know, t spend some time with yourself. Figure out what you like to do and, and what you're good at. You know, and then start to put yourself in positions where you can succeed. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, you were doing these menial jobs, but you were around 
what you want it to be around. So you yeah. have to put yourself in that position That's right. for these opportunities to manifest and, and for them to open doors for you. Absolutely. When I, when I was in college, as a, as a way to, to, to get by, I did extra work. Um, you know, I did a lot of background on, on TV shows back, you know, the, the, when we had black shows back then, you know, there was the Wayans Brothers, there was Living Single, there were, there, there were a, lot, a lot more shows. But I wasn't content with just having a job. You know, I wanted to get more out of the experience. I, I, want, I, I, I took stock in being on set and being able to learn and then watch and see who's doing what. You know, and in, in one of my experiences, I befriended the director. And when I made her aware that I was in film school, she said, hey, look, why don't you follow me for a week, right? I'll give you a script at the top of the week. You can break your script down the same way I'll break mine down, and then we'll meet, and you can come. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And I got that for being an extra, you know? But again, it's, it's about having a, a good, clear vision for what you want and, and being open to, to, to the possibilities. All right, let's go back out to the ground. Hi, what's your question? Are you still involved in other aspects of filmmaking, or is it just strictly video? Like, are you still doing other aspects of filmmaking? It's whether or not I'm still involved in other aspects of I am. Uh, I've been, I, I would like to get back on camera. I enjoyed my time there. Um, started having kids in 2009. So I'd like to say that I had my, my baby making years and, and I was grateful to be uh, very close to my children at the time. I think working in voiceover allowed me that time because I wasn't married to a nine to five necessarily. So I got breakfast, I made oatmeal, I dropped the kids off in the morning, I pick them up in the afternoon. Very valuable experiences, you know. Uh, and so I'm, I'm grateful for those. I, I write as well. Um, my partner, my producing writing partner, Bumper Robinson, who voices Falcon in the series. Uh, he and I sold the project last year to Film Roman, an animated series. Uh, so I continue to explore uh, those aspects of my creativity. Yeah. Because I want to do all of them. Yeah. Right? I want to do all of them. Mm -hmm. See, I feel the same way. Like, I have so many things that I, that I do. I feel like I, I don't want to have to choose just one thing. Right. Like I like doing stand-up comedy, I like acting, I like singing, I like beatboxing, rapping, all these things that I do. I don't feel like you should have to choose. You don't. You don't. You don't. Just, just keep yourself open and ready. And whichever one has room for you will choose you. Right. And, 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 and then you do that. You know? Working behind the scenes chose me first. So I, I did that. And then from there I found voiceover. So it's just, you know, it's just staying open. Staying open. I feel like that's the theme of this panel, just staying open. Yeah. Because you've mentioned that several times, and I think it's important to, you have to be open to receive the energies yeah. that are out there. And you don't know how it's going to happen for you. I agree. You know, if, if you put your goal out there, you don't know how you're going to get there. You just know that that's your goal. Right. And as long as the experiences that you have in life in, in some way relate to the continued pursuit of that, then you don't have empty time. Right. You know, you, you know, you, you get equity out of the time that you put in for, for whatever you're doing. Sweat equity. Sweat equity, yeah. yeah for sure. All righty. Let's go back out and see. I want to see. Hold on. Uh, okay, go. What is the process for, like, choosing the voice that you want to use for a character? Like, how do you just know, like, this is what I want him to sound like? Gotcha. Uh, the question is, what is the, what is the process for uh, choosing a voice for a character? Sometimes we get the benefit of the character art, so we get to see what the character looks like, and sometimes there are certain physical uh, characteristics that, that will lean toward a certain uh, tonality, even, or just a certain uh, characterization. A lot of times it's, it's in the description. They, they do their very best to, to, to be descriptive about the character. Sometimes there are clues in that. Uh, and a lot of it is, 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 is creativity, you know, it's, it's, it's creativity. And, and that comes from practice as well. Uh, I was always one to change my voice at drive throughs just to see what worked. <laughs> Some, sometimes I'm at home and I just talk to myself all day because I need to know what works. Because when I get in a, in a real situation and I have to find some character, I have to find some voice, it's already in there. It's something that I've personally workshopped, you know. Um, 
Yeah, so sometimes there are clues, and sometimes you just gotta just go for it. Do, do you, um, like, do you, like, drink tea? Like, how do you take care of it? Like, how do you take care of your voice? Uh, how do we take care of our voices? Well, uh, I can't yell at sporting events anymore. Certain things I just, I just, and it's too bad, because I'm a passionate sports fan, you know, but I did, there's just some things we can't do. I'd like to think that my career helps regulate my lifestyle. Uh, I don't stay out very late. Anything that has an effect on, on, on the voice is, is something you have to be very mindful of. You know, um, I work out. You know, I like to I like to stay fit. I like to keep my lungs active. It's a, an extension of my time in track, um, and it makes me feel confident when I'm in in the booth recording. It's like, oh no, I know I can still run a mile and some chains. This is cool. I'm just in this booth right here. I just need to keep keep breathing. You know? um, so there are breathing exercises. Uh, as well. Somebody, somebody was mentioning um, throat coat or something. I'm like just gonna say yeah, yeah. There's throat coat and. But there's uh, there are certain herbs and, and elixirs that uh, that are very helpful in some cases. This thing right here, I, I got from a session the other day. Uh, in in the video game world. I don't know if you guys play video games, but there's a lot of a lot of uh, battle chatter. Grenade! Fire in the hole! Ground down! Get him! Get him! So you're just yelling constantly, constantly, right? And and I think about dying, right? You only you're gonna die one time in your life. But when you're recording these games, I will have death by fire, death by falling off a building, death by hammer in the head. <laughs> there's all these different ways of of, uh, of expressing that. And, and it can take a toll on, on your voice. And so some places have these things, which is a, a, a Chinese elixir that will soothe your, you know, soothe your, soothe your throat and allow you to, to push, push through that. Super duper helpful. That's why I brought this <laughs> Is that like a powder you put it in water? No, you just drink that thing. You, you can put it in tea. A lot okay. of people will put it in tea. Um, but I will take it straight on occasion, just because, you know, it's, it, it cuts some tricks. Gotcha. Yeah, but it's great. It's very helpful. So things like that, you know, like you said, teas. And, and being responsible, being a responsible voice actor. Like I said, I can't go and, and yell and, and cheer for my team, you know, which sucks. I cheer for my son, though, when he's playing soccer. And then I pay for it later. I'm, I'm that dad. Come on, son! I'm that dad. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My son is not going to tell you about my son, though. He was born. The day my first episode as uh, T'Challa aired. Wow. Super exciting. What a day. It was, it was the best day. That's, that's it was, amazing. It was what a memory, day. too. Yeah. And he was a home birth. So I was torn between the TV <laughs> <laughs> and the tub. You know? Like, but thanks, it's, 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 it was It was great. It was, it was, it was a great thing. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. So he, I, I like to think of him as, as my little T'Challa. Um, How old is he now? He is seven. And does he watch the show? Absolutely. He loves it. I've, I've had the, uh, the good fortune of being able to bring him to uh, a session or two. He wow. came to uh, some ADR sessions, which is great because when we record the, uh, the first time through, we don't see anything. I don't know if you guys know about, uh, about animation recording. So the, we're, the mics are set up in, in basically a, a U shape, and everyone's got their own mic stand. You got your own mic. Your script is on, on your stand, and the scripts are read uh, chronologically. Each line is numbered, might have one through 200, and the director will direct you, okay, we're gonna go lines one through 10. You bang them out, if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, you, uh, you, you go back, and then we go all the way through. But with ADR, we're, uh, we're acting to, to picture, and it's usually the first time we get to see uh, the animation. So I've, I've had him uh, come to, to ADR sessions, and that was, that was really exciting. That's really cool, and he gets like a behind the scenes look. Mm -hmm. And what his dad does, like, Indeed, yeah. and and you're, he, I mean, you're Black Panther, yeah. So he gets to watch it, like, that's my dad. I know, right? That's okay. awesome. It, it means a lot. It really, yeah. it really does mean a lot um, for the whole family. I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to to have that experience and be able to share it with them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think they appreciate it. I hope they do. Oh yeah, of course. Family's important. Yeah. It's one of the most important things, I think. All right, we're going to go back to the audience. Any questions? Right there. Hi. Your son's favorite hero, Black Panther. Yeah. 
It, it's pretty cool. I mean, he was <laughs> he was Black Panther for Halloween before people even really knew about Black Panther. It was just like, look, son, this is what you gonna wear, bro. <laughs> two two years before the movie's out, and he's you know he's out there like that. And so now, you know, now we're able to just shine and, and, and bask in all the, the glory that is Black Panther, you know, and, and celebrate the fact that most people have now caught up. Which is really cool. That's what I say to people about uh, about the role. It's like, yeah, I didn't just start this. I, I've been doing this role for a while. Which is great. I love that. Does he show any interest in doing what you do? That does he do voices and stuff? Yeah, he does. Yeah. And he's he's kind of good. Man. He's, he's kind of <laughs> good. Which, the first thing he he would do, which tripped me out when he was maybe two or three, he used to play dead. <laughs> I didn't understand. It was a little hard at first. He would just get dead. Son, and then, so I just I just turned it into a scene. You know, we start doing scenes. Well, I'll, I'll be the dad who comes crying and finds you. You know, like just <laughs> random stuff. It's just, but he, when I ask him what he wants to to do and be, he says he wants to be an actor. I don't know how I feel about that, right? But um, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure he has the exposure to uh, to these things. Yeah, and then, then he can make his decision. But I don't I don't push him. It's not an easy path, mm -hmm. but it's it's fulfilling if it's what you want to do. Yeah, well, I I, I deal with more rejection than 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 most. Same. You know, I, I get told no more often than, than yes, and and you really have to have thick skin for that. Absolutely, you're gonna hear 99 no's before you get that one yes, but that one yes could be everything. So many no's. So many. I get so many no's every every day. There's, there's something I didn't get. Yeah. You know, and. It, you gotta just keep it moving, though, right? I, I try to forget about my auditions after. That's what I do. As soon as I'm done, I just I, I, I forget the sides. I don't want to do it ever again. Because you don't want to carry that emotional weight around. Yeah. Right. It's like, did I get it? Did I not get it? And everything in life will just be hanging in the balance, you know. And, and I, I don't let these things dictate my emotions, mm -hmm. you know. And that's my my way of controlling them. Is I'll I'll be my all in this moment, and the moment passes. And then on to the next. And if I get a call that says I've looked it, I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, that's cool. It's yeah. always a pleasant surprise. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's always a yeah. All right, let's see it out there in the audience. What's up? Um, was there any challenges when you first started doing the channel? Like, you know, uh, cadence change or tone thing? You were just like, I don't know if I got like, uh, speaking too fast for it or too slow for it. Were there challenges uh, with T'Challa? Like, they were adjusting to getting the boys perfectly right, or like they were supposed to do uh, I'd have to say that there was no reference for me when I began. Uh, the producers didn't say, hey, you've heard this or you've seen this, let's get it that way. So my initial portrayal of him was just born out of what I, what I felt about him, who, who I thought this, this person was and what his sound was. And and then they directed me accordingly. There were there were some some aspects of him that they asked me to, to tone down. Um, at times, I had him sounding a lot more African, you know. But because of the sandbox I'm playing in, I understand why they would ask me to dial that back. You know, it's like okay, okay, you have to keep it a little more mainstream. But I was okay with that too. So I'm like, I don't want everybody to just run around saying, oh, that's the African one, right? I rather them say that's the king from Africa, right? It's deep. Hey, that's real. Like I said, no, no. how are kids playing? How are you gonna play with your friends? I don't want to do this, but I don't do this. No, I rather you. I rather you do this. Right. Yeah. It's awesome. I don't see out there. Hi. Would you like to get back into gaming more, or do you want to stay with Android? I worked on a game two days ago. I'm still in, in, in the gaming world. Yeah, I worked on Far Cry last year, um, The Division. I still, I mean, they're auditions, just like, just like all other jobs, they're, they're auditions. And I, I like the games because the characters are usually pretty rich. You get some real, real texturous things that you don't get in, in other areas of, of voiceover. The challenging part, though, is experiencing that work. You know, because unless I can make it to level nine with my character is, I'm probably not going to hear that work that I did. 
you know, so I rely on the, on the walkthroughs. Thankfully, people play these games and they, and they post them. I'm like, there's my scene. You know, but, but otherwise, it's, it's just, it's vacuous. It's empty. We, we go in and, and we leave it there. But I enjoy the experience, though. I, I grew up playing games. I was going to ask you if you played video games. I did, yeah. Now I, I pretty I, now I just play the sports games. Okay. Because I don't want to get out on the field and hurt myself in, in real life. So I'm like, I'd rather score 40 points in this video game than to try to, you know, go to the playground and try, Trust my knee. try to be a weekend yeah. warrior. Yeah, that's not cool. I did that. That was my 20s. What was uh, your console that you played on when you were a kid um, back in the day? I had a, well, I had Atari 2600 yeah. okay. first. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I had a, I had a Sega Genesis. Nice. Yay. After I had a Sega Master System. That yes, Master. I had yeah. that too. Yeah, Master oh, System was a lot of fun. Man. So yeah, those were and yeah. Nintendo. And Any favorite games from back the eight big games that you remember? Double Dribble. <laughs> Double Dribble. Double I remember dribble. that. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Again, another sports game. Track and field. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't tell me you were beat me. I was gonna beat you. That's how fast I was. That was awesome. I I, I I took those games. That's cool. I was never really good at the. At the like the Legend of Zelda types of games, you know. Okay. I, I wasn't very good at those, but no, I, I can dunk on you know if you, if you want to see it. I'm NBA Jam. Yeah. Boom! Shaka laka. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love those games. All right, let's go back out. What's up? So you mentioned that you want to get back in front of, I guess, the lead role or like a back in front of the movie screen or the TV screen. Is there like any particular character that you kind of envision yourself doing, or even like a specific director? You know, that you would enjoy working with or you know collaborating with you know, a film or a show or something? Yeah, I uh, question is uh, uh is there a role in particular on, on camera that I'm interested in or, or any uh, any directors that, that I would like to work with. Yeah, I went to I went to school with some, some really talented people and it would be great to to be able to work with my friends. Um, Insecure on HBO. I don't know if you keep up with that. The showrunner is a good friend of mine. We went to USC together, yeah. like the, the two executive producers of that. I'd love to work with them again. You know, that, that, that's always fun. Um, but yeah, again, just, just being open. To, I'm, I'm down to work with, work with everybody. You know? And, and I, I really want smaller roles, man. Like, I, don't, I, don't want a, I don't want a big, a big role. Nah, nah, let me just make the, make the most out of, out of something that you didn't think was gonna have so much to it. Let me have that. Let me open your eyes in that way, because you know? those are important as well. They're all they're all pieces and parts of the whole, you know. And, and, and the better the better your bench player is, the better the whole team is, right? Yeah. All right. Let's see if anyone else has a question. Black Panther back there. Hi. I was gonna ask, like, what is your process? Question is what is what is my process in, in breaking breaking down a character? Uh, I look at it in, in this way. Um, scholastically, we would have reading comprehension, right? They give you a paragraph, and then there are, there are questions in the end that relate back to that. And so, that paragraph description for each character, I think that's where all your answers are. I think. The subtleties of, of description, uh, of context, as well, and having a real understanding of what's going on, right? Because uh, again, it's not just about your voice; you're still acting. You have to you have to do all the things that an actor would. And having worked on camera, I think there's a, a greater attention to that detail at times. And so I'll just read and reread, you know. Um, Sometimes I'll do things in a, in a different accent, just because it brings out something something I maybe I didn't see, and, and you know, in a non-accent of you. Um, and then just keep working. Uh, keep working. Do you find it easier now that you've been doing this role for eight years? Uh, when you go to record, um, is it easier now than when you first began in 2010? It is not easier now. Some parts of it are easier. Um, because I feel like I have a, a, a firm understanding of the character. But the stakes are greater now. The stakes of, of, of everything are, are much greater. And so I bring that to work with me every time. And I like that. 
I like that pressure. That pressure you know, it's like I'm, I'm at the starting line, getting ready to, you know, race in the, in the championship finals each time, and, and that's how I feel. And so I, I always feel like I have to be prepared. I have to be the most prepared. You know, in, the, in this recent season that we did of Avengers, Panther was the lead, right? And and as I talked about vision boards, there was all there was a certain way I wanted a show to feel if I was the lead. Um, and this is what I thought long before I was. And I tried to, to, to lead by example in that way <laughs> when we recorded. You know, just, just try to be dedicated and always be professional. You know, professionalism goes a long way. Right. People remember that. Yeah. I'll right, see out there. We're going to go right here. Hi. Who or what do you credit your success to? Who? Who or what do you credit your success to? Uh, not just a single person. It does take a village. And, and I, I recognize and appreciate all of the villagers. Uh, I think my mom, certainly, for denying me that initially, she was very supportive of, of my plays, and she came, the whole family came, I'm a massive family in Brooklyn. But when it came time to choosing my high school, like I mentioned, she said, you're gonna focus on your academics. And I think, I'd like to think that drove me. It, it, it fueled my desire to actually do it. Um, my my good friend in high school, who was in the play when I was apprehensive, he showed me again that 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 it, it was possible. You know, and, and I always thank him nowadays. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm I'm so glad that you did that play because it, it empowered me. You know, I he still lives in New York. I, I live in L.A. He does uh, more theater, but. I make sure I share every aspect of my journey with him because I feel like he, he shares in his journey with him, you know. Um, and my, my friend Bumper Robinson in, in LA, like I said, who, who voices Falcon, he, he's a, an accomplished professional. And I just, I just learned about, again, about professionalism and, and the like from, from him as well. Um, yeah, everyone. Everyone and, and my first agents who, who took a chance on me, you know. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's where you. That's. Yeah, I like that feeling. I like recognizing people for, for their their role. Well, yeah, we were saying earlier, um, it's important to show appreciation, to stay humble, yeah, and to be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta open your heart. That's right. That's right. All right, we're gonna go. Actually, in the back over here. Hi. No, you. Yep. Oh my dear, I love it, I love that. Uh, Blackish, right? That's that's on the DVR. The first 48. Uh, they shoot that right near where I live. Man. <laughs> well, not that, I'm not that close to it, right? Uh, the news. I watch the news. I watch, I watch a lot of news. I like to, to know what's going on in, in the world around me. Uh, and I have to say, Denzel. I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in Spike Lee's Brooklyn. Spike Lee made me want to be a filmmaker, and he had his go-to guy, and that guy was Denzel. And uh, I respect the choices that he's made as an actor and his commitment. I really dig it. I really dig it. And Have you seen his uh, the Equalizer Two that just came out? No, I've been I've been busy with these comics. No, he, <laughs> it's, it's his first sequel he's ever done. I know. I Ooh. think that's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it has to be good if he decided to do a sequel. Let's see, uh, okay. Denzel, uh, Malcolm oh, no, X, go ahead. Sorry. Denzel's Malcolm X really stood out to me uh, because, funny story, um, not long after that movie was released, I was uh, traveling with my family in New York. We went to the outlet malls in uh, Pennsylvania doing uh, some holiday shopping. And I was arrested. It was before the, the racial situations uh, come to light. But I was the victim of that. Um, and and I, thought about, I thought about Brother Malcolm and how he transcribed the dictionary when he was in there. And I wanted to come away from my brief experience with something that I could hold on to. You know, and, 
And so I, I always uh, look at look at Denzel because he played that that very pivotal role. And I remember, you know, when they they caught me, we don't give a shit about my plans. We don't. I don't know. He said all that lying and things like that that happened to me. You know, but these are things that strengthened me. You know, these are things that empowered me. You know, because I knew I wasn't who they thought I was. You know, they didn't know my GPA. I was just just that guy. Sorry. Wow. So have you been able to visit um, like any other panels here at Supercon just to go? Or have you bought anything in the exhibition room? Or even at any other cons? I, I have not been able to, to go to, to many other things here. Um, thankfully, I've, I've, I've been busy here. Um, I did patronize. I think I've, I've got a couple of shirts along the way. I think it's important to, uh, to, to share with, with other artists you know, to support them as well. Um, and I will continue to do that. I think it's, it's important. I wear a lot of uh, Black Heroes Matter shirts now because it does matter. Um, yeah, I try, to, I try to be supportive. And the panels are great. I've, I've, I've learned quite a bit from, from panels, just watching and, and hearing fellow artists. You, know, you don't know everyone's journey necessarily. We don't always have the time to, to talk at work. You know, so to, to hear their perspectives, I think, is quite enlightening. I believe there is a Black Heroes Matter, Matter panel uh, this weekend. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. I might have to pop in and we'll buy a shirt. <laughs> I belong here. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. I think we have about three minutes left. So with this time, why don't we take a moment to just talk about anything that you have coming up that we can see you in or any projects that you want to speak about that are current? Yeah, sure. The, uh the main one, I have to say, is, is the next season of Avengers, which, again, is entitled Black Panther's Quest. For, uh, for those of you who, who got that taste of Black Panther and, and you're, you're curious about him, I would say tune in to our series. It's, uh, it's quite a fun ride. It's quite a fun ride. They, they added some new writers this season, uh, writers of color and more uh, women writers. Which I think is great. It's it's awesome to see uh, to see the different the different takes. Yeah. You know. Um, but I'd say that you know check out check out Avengers uh, Black Panther's Split. Okay. September twenty third. Cool. And um, are you on um, social media? Do you have a website? I am. Yes. My name James Mathis the third. I uh, um, on Twitter and also on Instagram. I try to I try to post things. I'm not very good at it though. I'm, I'm not very good. I'm not very good. But that's where I am. Cool, and uh, you're gonna be here for the rest of the weekend, so uh, please, everyone, make sure you go visit him down at his table as well. And um, of course, thank you guys so much for coming out to the panel. All your questions were amazing. Yes. And let's give a round of applause for our guest. <laughs>